Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is this Pyramid regulated power supply model number PS52KX. Never seen one of these before. Never worked on one of these before. So the mystery lies within. So apparently this one doesn't work. Um, I don't know why it doesn't work yet, but it just doesn't. Don't know. If, I can't remember what the customer said. If it just quit working on them or what the case is um but pyramid is kind of up there with pile so i don't know how good it actually is but it's heavy as all get out and the inside of it it seems to be built fairly well so all right let's plug the power in see what happens okay all right. Um, yeah, it didn't like that at all. <laughs> Whoo! Yeah, that was... Yeah, it tripped the uh, circuit breaker. Okay, so, well, we know what the fault is. There is a hard short that dimmed the lights when I went to turn it on. So... All right, well, let's take take it apart and see what we got going on here. So, either it got overloaded or it's just a piece of junk. I mean, it's Pyramid. I'm not expecting a whole lot with Pyramid, but I don't know. It seems to be built fairly well. It's very, very very heavy which leads me to believe that it's a linear power supply oof there's all kinds of crustiness falling off of it so this one is not the same person that i got all of the um amplifiers from although it did come from him it belongs to someone else so this one has to be estimated and quoted and all that stuff and this isn't covered under a blanket price like it. all the car audio stuff that you've been seeing on this channel is so it's a completely different animal so yes this kind of reminds me of a bench power supply but it's much bigger it can go up 52 amps at 12 volts it's adjustable so i almost think this is actually designed for car audio use as a matter of fact that's what it was being used for was the bench test amplifiers it was meant for bench testing amplifiers um so and it died obviously oh cra yeah that's chineseium is crap Ooh, chineseium so but, I tell you what, this thing is built halfway decently. It's been sitting for a while. Look at all the cobwebs. It's not been in my house for a while. It's only been in my house for a couple months. But, wherever it was prior to me, it's been a while. Alright, so that reset. But yeah, this thing was just bomb trip. Um... So, yeah, this is interesting. There's no ground used on the bridge rectifier. How in the world? Yeah, this is a design I'm not familiar And it's not that old. 2015. I mean, it's eight years old, but it's not that old. So, yes, it looks like we're using TO3 transistors to drive the amplifier. Or not the amplifier, the power supply. So, either one of those has gone short, or that one of those rectifiers has gone. Yep, that's what happened here. So, okay. There's a secondary tap that's going to these guys, which is the control voltage. Yeah, I'm just, don't mind me, I'm rambling, because I'm just trying to figure out how this thing's designed. So, we have a control voltage tap. Ah, we have the DC grounds over here going to the center because this is a dual 
rail. So we got a center here and then we have the two and it makes sense. That's why we have two taps. So we have two taps which can be paralleled. It's because we've got two coming off the transformer. So one of these I think is shorted. Either that or one of these volt or one of these transistors are gone. I guess we're gonna find out, aren't we? So let's find out. So I can't. I'd like, man, I'd like to set up a tripod for this, but the problem is I can't get. A, I, can, I got one of those little tiny baby tripods. So if I mount it, you'll be like this. You're not gonna be able to see inside well. And we need to be like this so we can see what's going on and I don't have a tripod that can do that. What I'd like to do is get a wall mount thing. That way this thing can have a bird's eye view like that. Because that would make more sense. But in due time I guess. But for now let me pause the video so we can do a quick check on those bridge rectifiers and see if one of those has been nailed. Alright so the general design of, the, of a power supply like this is you have the main transformer coming in. Then you have the bridge rectifier, which I just checked, and these are in parallel. So this is like a dual, you know, winding, but grounds come over here. So we have the AC transformer, we have the rectification stage, and this is your linear adjustable regulator. Think of an LM317 on steroids. That's basically what we have here. So when troubleshooting a hard short, the first thing, the first line of defense, what we need to do is we need to check the, um, Re uh, rectifier so here's what we're doing I've, I've already went through these but this rectifier right here is shorted this one I think is fine it is slow charge up on the capacitors but yes um, that rectifier is completely gone so yes um, but here's how you figure out if they're in parallels what we do is we take the two positives here and we check them yeah, they're connected together, so. Yes, this winding is unhooked because otherwise it was just shorted together. Um, but I don't have any shorts on the DC rails to ground, so that means everything upstream might be okay. I don't know, but might be okay. So the next thing I want to do is see all of these emitters are tied together um where's all the bases all the bases and the emitters yeah and then okay the reds okay collector so there's the emitter there's the collector there's the bases so what we're going to do now, it looks like they're all in parallel. What we're going to do now is we're going to check the, the main transistor bank and make sure there's no shorts before we actually plug this thing in. So the main transistor bank is not shorted. So here we go. We're either going to blow another rectifier or something, but smoke test. Hey, we're on. Twelve volts. All right. So yes, we have power. Wow. Okay. So it's not that bad. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check you. You. Thirteen point two volts. Which is about where that's supposed to be. So it's supposed to adjust from twelve to fifteen. So here we go. Hmm. I mean, it's not under load, but it's a little low. But that makes sense, because we're missing one of the windings. So there we go. We've got a shorted bridge rectifier. That's all that's wrong with this thing. All right, so we've got some brand new rectifiers. KBPC5010, which is what these are. And here we go. So I didn't buy just one. I bought a pair of them, because I'm going to change both of them out that's a funky way to pop box that but okay so yes we have two rectifiers here and they're exactly the same so they should go in exactly the same way and that should solve our problem because 
this one was shorted so let's go ahead and change both of them because whatever shorted that one both of them were subjected to the same surge current so we're just going to go ahead and change both of them out so yep just in time the battery died on my drill but one thing i noticed right away is these two screws were very loose they weren't tight at all they were just they weren't even finger tight and i'm wondering if these backed out if that's why the one rectifier failed because it couldn't dissipate the heat properly that's that's entirely possible so i went ahead and changed both rectifiers so we're just going to go ahead and get this thing put back together and we're going to test it all right so here we go grab my multimeter get it set up in here figure out where we are with this power on Yay, it didn't trip the circuit breaker this time. Let's see. 13.2 volts. What is my meter showing? That's about right. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that is that is actually accurate. So, let's see. This goes all the way to 15 volts max. 14.7. And then all the way down, we're 10.8, which is very low. According to this, it should be about 11.1, but it's analog. You don't want to be higher than that red dot. Just 13.4. Yeah, so... We're good. Um, it's working fine. I'd love to load test it, but I don't really have a good load. What I, what I need, if I'm going to do a little more work for these, this will probably be the only one I ever see, though, so I can't justify it, but... If I was doing more work for stuff like this, I'd invest into an electronic load because you can buy them cheap from like AliExpress and Amazon or something like that. It has a big CPU cooler and fan on it. But yeah, I need an electronic load to test the thing because it can do up to 52 amps, right? So th this is designed for car audio use, really, for testing car audio amps. But yeah, I just got to do a little bit of cleaning, but everything seems to be working fine. So, there you go. The rectifier bolts had worked loose, and it blew one of the two bridge rectifiers, so changed them both. All done. So that is it for this one. And there we go. This has been running for, I don't know, half hour or so. Left it on the meter. Everything's stable. Everything's good. Um... So I, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing up. I'm fairly confident we don't have a regulation problem or any of those issues. It's just the bridge rectifier because of loose screws. So, all right, old parts are in the bag to give back to the original customer. And we're going to pack this guy up and move on to the next one. So if you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. Until next time, guys. Thank you for watching.